What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, thanks for tuning in. So I'll start this video saying there's a lot of people out doing yard work right now. So if you hear some of that in the background, I apologize. It is what it is. I can't control them for what they're doing. Uh, update on the fire situation. Obviously, still in the house. Uh, never ended up having to evacuate. We got bumped up to level 2. Uh, but the fires never got too close to our direction. The reason they bumped us up is we had some really weird wind fronts coming in and they weren't sure how that was going to push the fire, so they bumped it up just to make sure. But everything's all good. Everything in our area seems to have died down quite a bit. The fires seem to have moved out east, uh, more on the eastern side of the fire. So not as good for those people, but in our situation, we're doing pretty good. Uh, the air quality is finally back to a regular level now, which is really really nice um i gotta say i'm not one of those people that really worries much about any of that stuff but it is definitely noticeable um there's a whole air quality index scale that they have out there and normally ours is really really good um i'll pull it up here so you guys can see normally ours is pretty darn good uh looking at right around 11 right now if it focuses. Yeah, so we're looking right around 11 right now, which is about where it normally is, which is, as you could see, or if I don't know if you saw it, it's excellent. Uh, if you're looking at the scale, zero to, 0 to 19 is excellent. Then you got fair at 20 to 49, poor, unhealthy, and then very unhealthy and dangerous. Dangerous is right around 250 plus on the scale. To give you a little comparison, I think we were well over 500 uh we were reading when we had the fires in this area we were reading as the worst air quality in the world and if any of you guys have seen some of those other countries uh over around asia and the different parts of the world uh, you'll realize that that is a that's pretty impressive so it's nice to have the air quality back to normal um, it feels like a fall day. Uh, we had some windstorms come in, which blew a ton of leaves onto the ground, so it looks like fall. Uh, but it is a nice, crisp day, feeling like fall, which is kind of nice. I enjoy fall. For me, it's the best time of year. Um, but it means the rain is coming here in Oregon, which is less fun. Uh, but it is what it is. So everything's good on the fire situation. I hope you guys are ready for some unboxing videos because I got a lot of stuff to show you guys today. Um, kind of a lot of projects that have been building up and I've been accumulating supplies for that are going to start going into effect. Uh, some pretty sweet projects that I have been looking forward to that I will completely change the look of the truck. Um, so to start with, I had a guy on Instagram message me saying that he's built a store for himself um, I, I don't do a whole lot of this stuff, uh, but he messaged me on Instagram saying he's built a store for himself. Um, he's kind of selling different types of merchandise for diesel enthusiasts. I um, asked if I wanted a shirt and if I would rep it on the channel. I told him I would open it up and let you guys see it. I'm all for supporting small businesses. Um, so his uh, store page is called Diesel Things Apparel. Um, right there so if you enjoy different automotive and diesel things i think he just he was all power stroke stuff to start with i think he's brought in duramax stuff and cummins stuff um, i actually don't remember what shirt i ordered from him uh so we're gonna find out and you guys will get to see it see how it turned out ironically i'm already uh repping a greg a shirt I'm sure some of you guys know who that is. I will say Greg A is one of the people that inspired me to start my channel, so I enjoy his I enjoy his work, enjoy his products. So let's see. All right, I can already say the brand that he used for shirt quality very much approve. Uh, very, very comfortable shirt. Same same brand I'm already wearing. Super comfortable. That is good to see. I do not like cheap quality shirts. Aha! That's the one I ordered. Let me show you guys. I don't know if you can see it. 
Can't tell what you guys are seeing. There it is. Pretty sweet. I enjoy it. Good quality shirt. Good choice on the shirt uh, brand that you used. Looking forward to wearing this. Obviously, I like this color scheme. Um, cool. So if you guys are interested in different diesel stuff, uh, he has a ton of different designs on his website. You can go check it out. Um, now, into the meat and potatoes of what we're actually here to talk about. Now, there's a whole lot of stuff to show, and I'm trying to figure out what to start with. Um, I think I'll start with what is over there. So let me turn you guys around and show you what we're looking at. All right. So I already unboxed this one because I wanted to make sure it's in good shape and I didn't have to send it back. Uh, but it actually turned out to be much higher quality than I expected, which is nice to see. Um, ordered it off Amazon, kind of an off-brand, cheaper version. But overall, I think it's doing pretty good. Or it looks good. So what is it? Some of you guys might be able to tell already. We got a new front end or new grill for the truck. If you've been around the channel, you would already know that I've converted the headlights over to the 05 to 07 versions, which I think look much better. Now we got the grill to match it. And it's got the nice honeycomb inserts, as you can see. Nice honeycomb inserts, and that's going to lead us into the next bit. Um, I'll leave a link to the grill, the specific grill that I got here. Um, you can tell it's a little bit thinner than the OEM grills, but to be completely honest, I expected much, much worse. Uh, to me, it seems like it's good quality. I'm not worried about this thing breaking at all. Uh, the insert, once it's inserted in there, Super stiff, super rigid. Um, gonna have to pick up a new emblem to go up front. Uh, probably do something cool with that. But overall, very pleasantly surprised with the pro with the quality. Um, I think it was around a hundred bucks for this. I don't remember exactly, uh, but I'll link it below for anybody interested. Uh, what we're going to be doing with this is completely custom painting it um, to match the cut, the match the truck color, matching the truck. Um, I'm thinking right now, I'd love to get your guys' opinion on this, what I'm going to do is keep the honeycomb in the background black so it'll look kind of like, see if I can hold this right for you guys, kind of like that. Hopefully you guys can get a good angle on it. Keep it like that and then we're going to color match the rest of the grill uh, to the color of the truck. So this whole piece will be color matched. Um, it's kind of the classic uh, sport look that these trucks have had, that Ford has had for a long time. Uh, I think it'll look pretty good, uh, but let me know what you guys think. Um, so that's the grill that we picked up. Let me set this off to the side. Here's a look at what the insert looks like. You can see all the different spots that it's gonna clip into place should be nice and sturdy and this thing is pretty solid so that's the first project we're going to do that also ties in with another project that i'll be showing you uh, with the really big unboxing that's coming up uh i don't know what i'm going to title this video but this is the most expensive tool that i've ever bought so you guys can take your guesses Coming back over here. Let me shift you guys over some. All right, next unboxing. Again, it's already slightly opened. Um, I sure you, I'm sure you guys don't want to watch me uh, opening a box anyways. Uh, you're going to watch me on the third one. If you guys are into that, you get it on the third one. But we got 
The next unboxing here, um, the main heart, meat and potatoes of it is this can of paint from Automotive Paint Depot. Um, I saw them being used by another channel. I looked, it looked impressive to me, um, so I decided to use them instead of another place. Um, I think I paid a hundred bucks or so. Don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure for a uh, quart of, I think it's a quart. Yes, for a quart of color match paint ready to spray color match to the truck. And also came with a pint of 1K clear. I would prefer 2K, but I figure on the grill, um, I'll try it out there, see how it turns out. That part's replaceable, body panels are not. So that's the full painting setup that we're gonna go with uh, to color match that. And then in here, it's, you guys don't really need to see it. Got a bunch of miscellaneous painting supplies. Um, nice water, air, or air to water separator or water oil separator. Accidentally ordered three of these only needed one. I have no idea how I ordered three or if they messed up. I haven't actually gone back and checked, but I have three of them now. So those should last me quite a while. Um, going to be trying out this product because we're painting on plastic. Because we're painting on plastic, I wanted to use an adhesion promoter. Um, saw good reviews on this uh, Bulldog adhesion promoter. So I figured I would give it a chance. Uh, plastic's kind of weird um, if the surface isn't prepared properly, you often have issues with paint flaking off, which I don't want. Uh, so hopefully this does the job. You guys will find out. So will I. Um, I need to go and pick up a paint spray gun. I'm going to do that. Uh, chances are I'm going to be picking up a spray gun from Harbor Freight. Uh, relatively cheaply priced and they seem to have really good reviews. I'm not a professional painter. I don't expect to uh, lay paint down like a professional painter, so that should do. Um, a lot of people get by with Harbor Freight spray guns. So that's what we're going to be doing on the grill, color matching it, the whole shebang. Pretty excited to do that. I have absolutely no, uh, or basically no painting experience with an HPLV, um, high pressure, low volume spray gun. So it's going to be a bit of a learning experience, but that's kind of what I'm all about on this channel is if you haven't noticed already, most of the stuff I've never done before, I jump in and try to learn how to do it. So that's what we're going to be doing with the grill. Um, now it's time to move on to the very, very big unboxing that probably most of you guys came to this video for. Um, something I am very, very excited for. Something I didn't think I would buy at this point in my life. So... Without further ado, let's get to that one. All right, so as soon as I reveal the box, you guys are probably gonna recognize the name that's on the box and basically know exactly what it is or almost exactly what I bought. Um, so I guess without further ado, let's get to unboxing my brand new Miller welder. I'll go into all the model details here in a second. But, let's get to unboxing this thing. Now this is not something that I thought I would be buying until I got my own shop and my own place to be. But I obviously made the decision to go ahead and buy it now. And I am really, really looking forward to using it. For any of you curious, I have very, very little time on a welder. Um, like I said before, I am all about jumping in and trying out and learning new things. And this is gonna be one of those new things. There you go. Ended up going with the Miller Multimatic 215 welder. Um, let me get this out of the box, up on the table, and show you guys what we're looking at. Thank <laughs> you. 
Alrighty, so hopefully that fan or the furnace in the background isn't too loud. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the details of this welder, one, because I'm still learning the welder, and two, I don't think you guys want to sit through and watch me go through all the details on this in this video. Um, so I'll do that in another video if you guys are interested, but I'm going to kind of hit the main points of why I chose to buy this welder. Uh, so I would say, like I said, this is the Miller Matic or Miller Multimatic 215. Uh, I don't think it's that new of a welder. I think it's been out for a number of years already, uh, but it seems like a very, very good platform. Uh, I'm sure a number of you guys will go and look up to see how much this welder cost. Um, I think I paid $1,600 for it. Um, I'm not good. I'm, you guys that have been around the channel for a while know that I don't like buying cheap tools. Um, I was really, really on the edge on whether I was going to buy a $400 welder and just make do for the time being with that or buy the welder uh, or buy a welder like this. Obviously, I chose this. I always tell people, buy once, cry once. Um, it sucks having to buy a tool and spend a decent amount of money on it. $400 isn't nothing. So buy a tool and spend a decent amount of mo money on it and then however many years down the road having to upgrade again because it doesn't meet your needs. Um, so I made the decision to buy once, cry once, and buy the welder that I knew would last me for 10 plus years, if not longer. Um, I would not be surprised if I was still using this, this same welder 20 years from now. Um, I'm not a production shop by any means, so it's not like I'm gonna be using the crap out of it. Uh, but I wanted a welder that could do what I needed it to do for as long as I needed to do it for. In all honesty, I could be teaching my kids to weld with this welder. I would not be surprised. Um, so a couple of the reasons I chose it. Obviously, uh, we have our MIG gun here. Uh, so we can do MIG welding with this wire fed, both shielded and flux core welding. Um, Along with the welder, it comes with a gas regulator. Um, it comes with everything you need to set up gas. So it has a gas regulator here in the box. You guys can kind of see uh, it's got the tubing and everything for the gas here in this bag. Um, on top of that, this welder can do MIG welding, obviously. It can do stick welding, and it can also do TIG welding. Um, the TIG welding was a really big thing that I wanted. Um, I really want to teach myself to TIG weld at some point. Um, I would love to be able to fab up different intercooler piping and different turbo piping and different things. Um, and it's not saying you can't do that with MIG, uh, but I would, I've always wanted to teach myself how to uh, TIG weld. And so having this machine will allow me down the road when I get to that point, I don't have to buy a whole new welder. I can just buy the TIG kit um, and plug right on into this machine. Another nice feature that it has is I can run two different types of gases. So I don't have to completely disassemble a welder and put it back together for a TIG setup or a MIG setup. It's literally, I switch it to TIG, it switches the gases it's pulling from. I hook up my, uh, my TIG gun. I don't think it's called a gun, my TIG leads and start welding. Um, so it's not a huge process to switch between the two. Something I'm really, really happy about. So, I'll give you a quick look around of it. Obviously, this is where the wire wiring goes. Um, as with most Miller welders, they come with a nice diagram of different things. So, if you're not exactly sure what settings to get or what you're welding on, it'll tell you and give you a pretty good idea to get some decent welds. Um, Along with that, another th reason I really wanted this welder specifically is because I can run it off 120. I don't need 240 to run this welder. Obviously, this big plug in the back is for 240, but I'll try to do this on camera here. I, all you have to do is unscrew this. Pop that off, pop the new one on, new one on, and just like that, I can plug into 110, any 110 or 120 outlet, same thing. I can plug into any 120 outlet and weld with this machine, which is super, 
super awesome. Now, don't ex I don't expect it, and it's not going to weld the same level of steel as the 240, but having the ability to, let's say your buddy needs a job done at his place, um, nothing big, he doesn't have a welder, he wants help out, load up this welder, go over there, he doesn't need to have 240 in the shop or in his garage, just plug in and go. Um, super, super sweet feature. And I know there's other welders out there that can do that, uh, but that's something I was really interested in having. Um, so, obviously, there's not a whole lot to show about this. They got a nice little storage compartment to put the 110 lead um, or 110 plug when you're not using it. On the back here, not sure how well you guys can see it, but there, here are the two different gas ports for it. So there you go, now you can see it. So it has, they're labeled already. Here's your input for TIG, probably going to use C25, and then MIG, I have absolutely no idea what gas to use for that. Um, don't need to really worry about that right now. But two different gas ports, you don't have to unhook tanks, you don't have to move them around. Literally change the settings on the welder, tell it what you're welding, and it will switch what gas you're gonna be using. Super, super handy. Obviously power button on the back. So there you guys go. That's the welder, most expensive tool I have ever bought. Um, it definitely didn't feel good pressing accept. I mean, it did. We all been there um, ordering something you've always wanted. I did not think I was going to be getting this welder before um, I got into my own shop um, along those lines. Like I said, this thing can be run off of 120. As of right now, I think the plan is I'm going to be wiring in a 240 outlet. I'll do a whole video on that of adding on a 240 outlet, or I'll probably do a video on that of adding on a 240 outlet here in the garage. Um, it'd just be nice to have. Um, originally, I guess I should tell you guys, why did I buy a welder? Um, the reason I bought a welder is if you've seen my truck, you'll know that I have a ranch hand grill guard on it and the factory bumper. What I'm going to be doing kind of along with that grill is welding up a full steel bumper for the truck, designing it and laying it out and welding it myself. This is something I've always wanted to do, something I always thought would be fun to do. And so now the time has finally come to actually do it. Uh, let me give you guys, let me go over to the front of the truck and kind of show you guys what I'm talking about. Um, so you can get, start to get a visual of what we're doing. All right, so here's the truck, my truck, the truck that it is going to be going on. As you can see up here, we have the full ranch hand grill guard already, factory 9903 bumper, 05 to 07 headlights. Behind those headlights, I have the 05 to 07 header panel, and I still have my factory grill there, which is why I ended up buying the new one so we could replace it. As you can see right now, there's a pretty significant gap that I'm running between the bumper and the grill and the headlights and everything. And that is because something I didn't expect with the 05 to 07 header panel, I actually ran into some interference. You guys can't see it. Header panel's right in there. Um, ran into some interference where the bumper tucked up where it should have been, was interfering with that. That's because the 05 to 07 grills drop down lower. So, going to be installing the new 05 to 07 grill. That'll hang down, honestly, probably pretty close to where the bumper is sitting now, but I think it'll be a little bit lower. And then we're going to be taking off the factory bumper here and putting the grill guard back on and using the grill guard as the frame to weld up the rest of the bumper. Um, I'm pretty darn excited about it. I think it should turn out pretty sweet. Um, right now, the plan is to model it just after the original ranch hands, maybe add my own touch on it a little bit. But overall, that's what we're going to be doing. So that's why I bought the welder, was specifically for this project. Then we got the grill that we're going to be putting in place. And then, of course, we're going to be painting the grill to match the dark Torador red that's on the rest of the truck. I think it should be pretty darn sweet. I went back and forth between whether I should put the 05 to 07 bumper on and run it like that. Um, I like the look of the full steel bumpers. I know it's personal taste. Some people do, some people don't. 
I like the look of it, so I'm going to be building it. Uh, I've been scouring the web trying to find a ranch hand for sale, and they're not very easy to find for these trucks. I was able to find this grill guard for about 300 bucks, which I jumped on that deal real quick. A um, guy had it on his truck, totaled it. Grill guard was in perfect shape. Um, this is the grill guard itself is actually for an 05 to 07 truck, which is why you see these weird little leg things sticking out there. Those would normally attach to the frame. Um, on these trucks, it's just bolted on to the frame rails. Uh, but that is the project we are going to be doing. Very, very exciting. At least to me, it is. Um, so let's go back to the garage and end out this video. All right, guys, so there you guys go. Uh, that is all the unboxing I had planned for today. I know this video is pretty long. I thought about, no, oh, I forgot a box. One more box. All right, one more box I forgot about. It's gonna be quick, I promise. We'll get it over with. This should be a new Miller helmet. And a two pound roll of flux core. That came with it. So when I bought it, I bought it through Cyber Weld if anybody's interested. Um, all the prices were about the same, but these guys happened to be running a sale or a deal where I got some flux core and a helmet. Um, it's nothing fancy, it is a Miller welding helmet um, or visor, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but Obviously, going to be doing some welding, so I needed a helmet. Figured for the same price, getting the helmet for free, I might as well order through them. Um, so yeah, that is the final unboxing. Uh, that is everything so far. Got some more stuff that's going to be on the way, different accessories. Going to go pick up a welding cart. Got to go pick up a tank of gas. Um, got a wire in the 240 into the garage. And then we're going to be good to go to start welding. Um... Honestly, I'm not entirely sure when I'm going to be starting this project because hunting season's coming up uh, in about two weeks, and I don't want to be driving around without a front bumper. Um, so I'm trying to decide when I'm going to be starting this project. Uh, we'll see. I haven't decided that yet. Um, if you guys are interested in seeing any hunting stuff, let me know. Um, it's kind of hit and miss when you put it on the channel. Uh, YouTube isn't the biggest fan of that kind of content. Uh, but I might put a couple videos out if you guys are interested. Um, I got a deer tag and an elk tag. I don't anticipate getting an elk. Hunting elk from a wheelchair is pretty darn hard, um, is what it is. But I do plan on getting a deer this year. Uh, so let me know what you guys think if you guys would be interested in any hunting videos. Uh, I think with that, this video is probably getting long enough. Let me know what you guys think about the bumper build. If you guys have any ideas or recommendations, maybe you've built a bumper yourself. Um, I would love to get your guys' input on it. Yeah, it's something I've always wanted to do is weld up a full steel bumper. Um, this isn't quite the full shebang because I already have the grill guard built um, on the truck. Um, but I think it's a pretty good starting point. I'm really looking forward to learning to weld. Uh, I'm not going to be giving, trying to give you guys lessons on how to weld. Uh, you guys are going to be watching me learn. Hopefully I pick it up quick so I don't completely sabotage my bumper and make it look awful. But that's a risk you got to take. I don't think it'll turn out too bad. Um, yeah, if you guys are excited for this content, let me know. Um, if you're new here, if you're new to the channel, you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button if you're inter interested in stuff like this. Got a lot of fun stuff coming up. Uh, this should be a pretty good month or two of projects. To all my current subscribers, thanks for watching. Um, if you made it this far in the video, I appreciate it. You probably liked it. Hit the thumbs up if you did. Uh, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.
I can't reach the camera, so no little boop to end it right now. So, have a good weekend. Hey.